Hello, so uh, welcome to another in the series um, related to the gene expression paper. Um, and we're going to be looking at the effects of the environment on the phenotype. Um, although we are born with certain genetic code and a certain genetic potential, we don't always meet that potential or um, turn out in exactly the same way as expected because of the environment that um, we are in. So in the example that I've got here, we've got uh, baby Spider-Man there. Now if baby Spider-Man lives a good clean lifestyle, plenty of exercise, good food and all the rest of it, we get superhero version over here. Superhero version A, I guess. Um, but uh, if he doesn't live such a great lifestyle, too much bad food, not enough exercise and all the rest of it, we get Spider-Man B over here. All right, And this is an example, basically, of how the environment can affect the phenotype. Both Spider-Mans were the same person, so it means that they have the same DNA. But because of just different environmental factors, their phenotypes are different. All right, so here's an example here with plants. Um, and this is to do with altitude of growth of these plants. So all of these plants along here, all of these plants, if we go down this way, we've got plant four. So that's the same plant. They're all cuttings of the same plant, which means because they're cuttings, they are genetically identical. And what the scientists did was take cuttings and basically grew them at different altitudes. And they found that that had an effect on the phenotype of these individuals. So even though this plant and this plant and this plant are genetically identical, have exactly the same genes, exactly the same genetic code, they look different. All right? uh, so it means that the genes that they've got have probably been expressed differently according to their different environments. Same here, individual 13. All of these are cuttings from exactly the same plant. So that means that they have exactly the same genetic material. Yet, if we look at the different altitudes, here's high elevation, high altitude, it grows like this. At medium altitudes, it grows like this. And at low altitudes, it grows quite a lot taller. So, even though they have exactly the same genes, same genetic material, they grow differently because of the environment. Here's another example. And, um, it's not just things like um, the environment and altitude and stuff which can affect um, the way organisms phenotype turns out to be. It can also be how old an individual is and uh, that will affect what genes are expressed. Now this example here is to do with the production of an enzyme called lactase. Now lactase is an enzyme which breaks down the sugar lactose in milk and uh, people who can't make lactase um, are lactose intolerant. Now all humans can produce lactase at a young age when they're infants and that's so that the infant can process the milk from uh, the, their mother's breast milk. Um, but what happens is, as an individual gets older, their ability to produce lactase is decreased. So it means that the genes involved with making lactase basically end up being switched off when they get older. Um, now what this graph here shows is um, different um, races around the world actually express lactase in different ways. Um, and that could have been something to do with earlier in the, uh, you know, these populations when they all move to different areas and are experiencing different conditions and so on. There would have been different advantages. Um, and what they found is um, people from European nations usually can continue to produce lactase even when they're older. But most others most others stop producing lactase as they get older. So the incidence of lactose intolerance is actually quite high in non-European populations. And for some reason, um, Europeans have um, maintained the ability to produce lactase even for uh, when they're a lot older. Um, so this is an example basically of how age or how old an organism is can affect the production of, uh, or sorry, whether a gene is actually switched on or not. All right, another thing that can actually affect uh, the phenotype of an organism is factors to do with 
um, gender or sex of the organism. Uh, so depending on the gender of an organism, different genes can be actually switched on and it's thought to be uh, basically a combination of the hormones that um, different sexes produce and also where these genes are found. It's thought to, that a lot of the genes responsible for sexual dimorphism are found on the X chromosome and with females they've got two X chromosomes so it means that uh, um, the recessive traits carried on them are usually masked whereas the uh, males only have one X chromosome so it means that the recessive genes on there related to maleness are expressed and resulting in them appearing differently having hairy faces and, and all the rest of that sort of thing as far as humans are concerned um, and the other thing that affects whether genes are switched on and off is the amount of hormones that the organism produces so obviously males produce testosterone and testosterone will uh, interact with different genes switching them on or switching them off um, which will then result in different sexual traits um, resulting in sexual dimorphism. And the, and the same is thought to be true of ducks and the different colored plumage that they produce. Yeah, depending on um, what gender they are, the, the males are a lot brightly, more brightly colored, whereas the females are not. And that's also thought to be related to uh, different genes being switched on and off. Even though both the male and female populations have the same genes, they don't necessarily have them switched on and off. So uh, gender can also affect the genes that are expressed or switched on. Another thing that can affect it is temperature. Now look at this cat here, although it's nice, cute and fluffy little thing. It's also got a black face, black ears, and the tip of the tail and the feet are the darker areas of the cat. And then we got other areas which are sort of brownish, and then we got areas which are white. And this is actually related to temperature and that only the coolest areas or the colder areas of the cat will mean switch on the gene for uh, producing pigmentation uh, in these areas. Now there was an experiment involving rabbits to sort of prove this and this Siberian rabbit has the same sort of thing uh, the ears and the nose and the, and the feet um, are pigmented where the rest of it is white and it was thought that these are the cooler areas and only cold areas, the, the low temperature basically switches on the gene which produces pigmentation. What they did was they basically strapped cold packs to different areas of the rabbit and then left them there for a while and then took them off and they found that in the areas where the cold packs were the uh, fur had actually started to turn darker. Um, basically the cold temperature of the um, cool packs had switched on the gene which was responsible for um, pigmentation in the rabbit's fur. So there's another example of how the environment can affect the phenotype of an organism. Even though, let's say that we had two rabbits, they're twins, we put them in different environments, one has a cold pack strapped to them and the other one doesn't, that will result in different fur pigmentation for those organisms. So even though they have the same genes, the environment has affected their phenotype.